the Weather Channel will track storms for you and all the threats actually all night long so you have the information you need to stay safe. So we're doing this again. Yeah. What, I mean, for the third time in less than a month. It just seems like every couple of weeks we have to deal with these systems coming across and severe as well. Yeah. Well, Happy New Year, Alex. Yes, Happy New Year to you. I haven't seen you since last year. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and Happy New Year to all of you. We're starting off 2023 in a big way. Yes. So how about we A lot of real estate included with this. So you watch a zone all the way from uh, South Dakota, Nebraska, straight up through Minnesota, even into Wisconsin, with at least five to eight inches of snowfall. Some spots more than 12 potentially more than 18 to 24 inches. So we're talking two feet of snow potential. Then we have the icy side of things as well. And there is an ice storm warning up right here. Sioux City, Mason City, this whole zone in northwestern Iowa, and then up into southern Minnesota as well. Now, and, and beyond that, of course, is the winter storm warnings. Certainly have to watch that rain-snow line with this one. That is going to be affecting just how much we get in terms of precipitation. We've got the snowflakes flying out there right now. Rapid City, it's snowing. North Platte, we have snow coming down as well. Sioux Falls and Omaha, not yet, but it is coming later today. Your winter storm warnings do go into effect just after noon. Now, here's our upper level low and the energy with it, and you see all this moisture coming out into the plains overrunning that's the worst kind of winter weather right when you have cold air you have moisture overrunning the cold air and that's what we're going to have going on today which is why we do have that icing threat out here watching for a zone from nebraska right up into iowa with significant ice that will actually not just cause slick streets and that will be a big problem but also cause power outages and we're watching for that from nebraska into northwestern iowa southern minnesota you know minneapolis we've got to keep an eye on you snowfall of course potential there as well but really on the south side of town watching that ice line exactly where that sets up and then the upper level low gets cut off for a few days and we get stuck in the snow showers here. Confetti out there, the snowflakes, Alex coming down all week long. Uh, you know, and just like that. Oh man, to say the least. Now, this is how the second wettest day ever recorded in San Francisco played out. Look at the flooding everywhere. Highway 101 in the southern part of the city just filled with water on Saturday. The city by the bay has uh, finished their 2022. They bid farewell with 5.46 inches of rain. That is nearly 47% of their monthly rainfall. And I'll tell you what, we are going to be looking at another round coming in this week. Rain today in Northern California, just an appetizer to the downpours that will follow later this week. We do have some flood watches up right now. That does include Sacramento. And this is all on the heels of a deadly New Year's storm that caused significant problems. Meteorologist Molly McCollum has the latest. We have another atmospheric river set up this week here. This is going to be a category three, which is still going to be significant. Now, Sacramento, it's Wednesday, Thursday that we get into that. There'll be a few showers out there today and you saw that flood watch up, but really the next big push of moisture comes in midweek. And we've got a big push. Look at three to five inches across Northern California, locally heavier amounts. You'll see that in here, maybe more than five or six inches, plus big snow coming in. And a lot of this moisture will shift up into the Pacific Northwest with another couple of inches of rain coming our way. So let's get you through today. Uh, things are quiet down here. Watching the weather pretty closely for the Rose Bowl. Could we have some showers? Yes, the chance is there as we get into this evening. You'll see some moisture pivoting in as we get through the afternoon and evening hours. But then look at what comes our way by Wednesday. Wednesday. So this is Wednesday morning. Next big push to moisture comes on in. This is our Cat 3 atmospheric river coming our way. And you'll see that on Thursday, how it just kind of spreads out. The pattern is changing by the end of the week. And we're actually going to see the moisture just get spread up all of the coast as more of a ridge kind of builds into the west, spreading out the moisture here. And where it's cold enough, we'll get snow. For a lot of us along the, you know, the coast, it will be rain that continues until Friday, especially there into Oregon and Washington. Now, snowfall will be be looking at another couple of feet coming our way. Will it be the epic snow that we saw in the Sierra last week with over the weekend? We were getting, you know, more than more than uh, two feet of snow in just 24 hours. That could happen again. We'll see. Most spots, I think, will be running less than we were this weekend. But it's a big push of moisture coming in. And so watching for travel again to be impacted, watching Interstate 80, you go down towards, say, Three Rivers, and we've got another two to three feet of snow coming our way. And this will be in just a 
another two to three day time frame. San Francisco in the Bay Area, Wednesday, Thursday, another set of rainy days. We'll get some showers today, but the big push of moisture comes in with the rain and wind on Thursday. It was just epic out there, Alex, watching some of that snow. I yeah. The rates, the snowfall rates I saw in the Sierra at one point were like seven inches per Which hour. Which is just mind boggling, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and you know, yeah. we, of course, we certainly need all this, but yeah. uh, so much too quickly can become a problem. It, it right? was, yep. Yeah. Well, 2023, getting off the show. I'm sure no one expected everything. When it, right. And that's pretty much what we're going to see this week. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It'd be, yeah. You know, one thing, we can kind of be ready for that, but it's like, Across name it, we got it. Even fog. Right. All right, we'll be right back with more. So you talk. It's rain and cold. Mm -hmm. Now we bring in the threat for thunderstorms. This is our warm weather problems, right? Um, today's risk area includes Texas into Louisiana, all of Arkansas, and even up into Missouri. Yeah, a pretty decent bit of real estate that we'll be watching. And then as we get into tomorrow, you see that area shift a bit off towards the south and the east. Okay, so then let's take a look at tomorrow's risk area. We've got New Orleans in it, Hattiesburg, up to Montgomery, Birmingham, all areas that will see that risk of storms going severe. And so let's break that down. Yeah, so we'll start off. We'll already be dealing with storms in the morning and they'll be tracking towards the east out ahead of the cold front there. Yeah, you know, we're bringing in more moisture, that available energy that'll be building as we head on through the day as well. And those winds, mm -hmm. Jen, very important. That's how we can uh, organize these thunderstorms a bit more and bring in the threat for tornadoes. Yes, yeah, so, all right. So that turning of the winds contributes to the five on the Torcon. We have that, including in New, Orleans, New Orleans and just north of there, up to Birmingham. But look at the whole zone. I mean, all the way to Nashville. We've got the chance of storms going severe, and there's an isolated risk of tornadoes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So early in the morning now, four in the morning, we talked about some of those storms coming through the Memphis area. And then as we head into the late morning hours, continuing to slide towards the south and the east. Afternoon storms, Birmingham down towards Montgomery. We'll be watching you closely. ATL as well. Mm -hmm. Watch the skies for Tuesday uh, later in the and day. And you notice how it's multiple rounds, just mm -hmm. like we're seeing in the southern plains, lower Mississippi Valley. We're going to see that through the southeast, too, with multiple chances of getting storms that could be severe. Yeah, absolutely. It's not until we get into a look at that Wednesday afternoon that we start to see things quieting down. Everything really coming from west to east in terms of the quiet down. But with the multiple rounds, that rain's going to get a chance to add up. Watch for some flash flooding. Yeah, and then storms continue on Wednesday. Right now, doesn't look like a widespread severe threat, but we'll keep an eye on it all the way from the Florida Panhandle right up into the Piedmont of North Carolina. Yeah, lots to follow here over this week. Unfortunately, starting 2023, I feel like it's a yeah. January uh, type of uh, situation. Yes. Now, that said, thunderstorms are in the forecast. We do get storms in January, and when we do, this is the area to watch, which happens to line up with pretty much where we're looking at. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to get it, it's going to be in this yeah. zone, and unfortunately, that's what we're tracking here uh, for this uh, early part of 2023. Damaging winds, tornadoes are risk, uh, even some hailstones and heavy downpours all in store here for us as we head on through the next couple of days. And there will be a snowy and icy side to the north of all of mm -hmm. this. We'll get to that, but Alex, we should start with this. This is sort of, you know, first and foremost, what we're watching for today. Yeah, this is what we really have to be prepared for, uh, watching the weather situation over the next few days. Let's tackle it here and focus in on uh, the big threats that we do face, starting with what we've got. Big travel has you know, this week, a lot of folks traveling back home, if you haven't already. So I want to show you where we're going to have some of the biggest problems from winter storm Hudson. We have snow, we have ice, we have wind. So we really have a lot of issues to deal with here. Now, the ice storm warning, that's in pink, that's standing out. This is where we could have significant ice accretion. And not just on roadways, which would be a travel problem, but also on power lines, on trees, which could take down power lines. We also have the winter storm warning surrounding that with snow already starting to come down. And that will be expanding as we get through the next two days spreading up through the Midwest. Now, North Platte, we've got snow. Rapid City, we've got snow. This is all with the moisture out ahead of our system right now. The system itself, you can see the spin back here. This is the upper level low. This is going to make a trek right here across the North Central Plains and into the upper Midwest. But when that happens, we're going to be watching all of this moisture coming in and overrunning the cold air that we have at the surface. And so that's what's going to give us that ice threat, that overrunning situation. We'll see that right in here across portions of Nebraska, then into Iowa over the next 12 to 24 hours. It really gets started through the afternoon hours today and continues into the overnight. This is six o'clock and this pink area, the freezing rain, we're likely to see roads getting icy very quickly watching across northern Iowa like Mason City. We got to look into Minnesota as well. And this line, this rain, snow, ice line that we're going to see, we have to watch, you know, where exactly does that set up? There's always uncertainty with this kind of forecast here. It becomes an outcast, so you have to pay attention to the weather. But then as we watch the whole upper level low move into this area, it gets stuck. And so we end up with snow showers sticking around here all the way into Wednesday and maybe even Thursday.
Pretty seen though with that snow over the river. Now let's take you into what's coming our way with the winter threats. First and foremost, we've got snow spreading today across Nebraska, South Dakota. It's going to get into Minnesota and Iowa. So we want to take you into more details on this forecast for winter storm Hudson. We've got anywhere from a foot to a foot and a half of snow in the bright purple. The pink is 18 to 24 inches. So we're talking nearly two feet of snow there. There'll be some spotty areas of that. Things will be underway throughout the day today. So you got to keep in mind some safety tips. We'll talk about shoveling. The danger is that shoveling increases blood pressure and your heart rate, and you do need to take a lot of caution. Now, the kind of snow we're thinking out here is not going to be the really wet, heavy snow, but even so, it's going to add up, so it's going to have a lot of weight to it. Um, the danger is that the cold constricts the blood vessels and decreases oxygen to the heart, so it's not just about the weight of the snow. The cold air plays a role as well. So while you're shoveling snow, some tips. Use a small shovel. Start slow. Take lots of breaks and drink plenty of water. Believe it or not, you can get dehydrated out here, even though you think it's not, you know, uh, like it is in the summertime, but the cold air is very dry and that can actually help you get dehydrated quickly. Also dress in layers, cover your mouth and watch for signs of a heart attack. Now, the ice is another problem, but we've got ice accretion possible more than a half inch, maybe up to three quarters of an inch. This zone here from parts of Iowa, we'll see that into Nebraska too, right around Norfolk. So this is an area where it's not just road conditions, which will be a problem everywhere that we've got pink, but we also have significant ice accretion on tree limbs, power lines, and that could take out power. So once you get to this part, this part once you get to a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch, you start to see some tree damage with numerous power outages, but if we get over three quarters of an inch, and that is possible in a few locations, widespread tree damage and long-term power outages, and certainly that's a big danger with the cold that we have in place here as well. There's also a severe area and show you where thunderstorms will fire up going from today into tomorrow. Now, you know, the zone today is Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas. Overnight threat continues and tomorrow then it moves back into portions of southern Mississippi, Alabama. And you got to keep an eye on the Florida Panhandle too. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. So pretty big real estate here over the next couple of days dealing with the severe risk. We'll focus in on tomorrow here for you again, the likely zone southeast of Louisiana up towards central uh, parts of Alabama. But the risk for severe weather extends yeah. all the way up even north of uh, central Tennessee. Yeah, so Nashville. I mean, what a, what a week we've had here with the wild weather changes that you've endured across the zone from the, you know, temperatures in the single digits. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Now to severe weather right. in about, you know, a little more than a week's time frame. So the ingredients are coming together, though. You felt it outside. The temperatures have warmed up. The mm -hmm. dew points have come up. And the wind energy is going to complement all of that, unfortunately, to bring a risk of severe weather. Yeah, I mean, all that really made for some nice weather the last few days. But that is all now helping to fuel the these thunderstorms that we do anticipate to deal with tomorrow. There's that five on the Torcon scale for tomorrow in southeast Louisiana, tra tracking up towards the north and the east from there. All right, so let's time it out for you. Look at the forecast radar. And tomorrow morning, we'll begin. Thunderstorms will be ongoing. Memphis through Jackson, a couple of rounds possible for you. Hattiesburg watching thunderstorms. And through the afternoon, these storms actually might just have a little more juice to work with, with everything coming together. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see this is right in that sort of heart of the afternoon, dealing with those thunderstorms. Atlanta gets some rain, some rain. The Carolinas as well. Looks like more steady rains there with the of risk back towards the west, but again, it's two rounds that we'll see coming across mm -hmm. this area. And then into Wednesday, we've got the chance of thunderstorms, and right now, it doesn't look like we're going to have widespread severe, but certainly some of the storms can be a little more feisty from the panhandle of Florida all the way up to the Piedmont of North Carolina. And of course, you can stay prepared here for the threats whenever by the, the whatever alert that you have. So that's the key, right? Having something, a NOAA yeah. weather radio, uh, those text alerts, on your phone. I know it's so easy to just turn it off because it can be annoying, but yeah. it could save lives. Well, when you have multiple storms coming through, you're sort of on guard. You're on guard. You're ready. Yeah, yeah exactly. So the, the, the key here is we head through this of watching the skies, watching the warnings, and of course, taking action when those warnings do fire up. All right, we'll have more on that. Plus, as we extend our day to guide you through yours. The Weather Channel will track the threats all night long, so you have the information you need to stay safe. Yep, 2023, starting off uh, very busy. We do want to wish everyone, though, a happy new year. Yeah, it is kind of odd, right? It's winter, but we're dealing with a very spring, yeah. stormy time here, particularly across the south. Now, there is the winter side of things that we also have to try. Which will also be serious. We've got it covered for you right here on the Weather Channel.
Well, yet another coast-to-coast -coast system. This is the third week in a row that we're seeing monster systems cross the country here. Winter storm Hudson prompting alerts, including ice storm warnings from eastern Nebraska all the way into portions of southern Minnesota. And we're going to let you know who could actually cash in on two feet of snow. And in the south, those warmer temperatures are going to fuel the threat for severe weather. We have the threat really for the next two days here. Tornadoes, though I think damaging winds will be uh, the biggest issue with this and also an increased flood threat. Meanwhile, the west is dealing with its own set of problems. Round after round of rain and snow slamming the coast. Torrential rain flooding roadways, straining drivers, and sending rivers into flood stage. And I'll tell you what, it's far from over because this entire week, the west coast gets hit day after day after day. This is America's Morning Headquarters. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams alongside meteorologist Jim Cantori and Molly McCult. And Jim, these storms in the south won't be one and done. We actually could see multiple rounds coming through. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, continue to have those windows down here for the next couple of days until our whole system moves east. Then we have colder air coming in, but really it just knocks us back to average. Look at our potential record highs and warm lows, by the way. And they stretch from really the Mississippi River all the way to the east coast through Wednesday. So today, into the 60s, into the 70s, yet again for us. Mobile, our average high is 61. We're going to be 15 degrees above that, and we stay about 10 degrees above that through our Wednesday. 73 and sunny? I mean, come on now. It's not January, people. It's ridiculous here. That warmth tomorrow as we head into our Wednesday. We're talking over 200 million will be above average through midweek for us here. And look at that surge all the way up to Erie, PA with 61. Baltimore, we're at 65 degrees tomorrow. It's just outrageous. And here's a look at some of the records that we actually could tie or break. Charleston, we could break a record from 1951. Peoria, we could break a record from the 50s as well. And as we go down the list here, uh, even South Bend, Indiana, a record that has been standing just since 2004. I don't like when we see these records broken in recent time going back to the 50s. All right, fine, we could break a record here and there. But when they're more recent, that's not great if you just continue to get warmer and warmer. That is a sign of the changing climate. So tomorrow, there's a look at our record on the bottom. The forecast is the one that's much bigger there. But, Jim, it is across the board. It's going to be hot, I feel like, uh, for a lot of us here. Maybe hit the pool. Oh, this one caught my eye. Orlando, we're only two <laughs> degrees away from our record in 1938. You're laughing about the pool, but. Uh, I, yeah, because the water. A few more details here on uh, Winter Storm Hudson and what we'll do in the Mid-Atlantic. So. As we go into our Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday night, that's when we start to feel the effects of it here into Washington, D.C. And you see it's just another big, huge system that's going to be rocking us. On the backside, there's that cold air. So that gets pulled in. But by the way, it's not that cold. It really just takes us back down to average for the most part here. So that's a positive, especially after what we had to deal with the other week with those ridiculously cold temperatures and wind chills. But we will see some of that rain changing into snow before it does move out. So let me play it out for you. Again, starting the week, not that big of a deal for us along the East Coast. But Tuesday, it's in the Midwest. And you can see it's stretching all the way to places like Boston with clouds and a few showers. And then it's really Wednesday is game day for us as it comes through and there's your snow on the back side of it it takes the whole week for this thing to go through and remember the mess that it made on the west coast we are going to see the potential for flooding here along the east coast though i think the west coast got hit exceptionally hard from the system one to three inches three to five for us overall like i said we're not talking three feet like we were in the west and jim we're talking one to two inches not horrific flooding like the west but it still is going to be impactful Abrams Palisade. Night hours, because this thing will start to kick off later today and then tonight. You're two times more likely to die uh, from a tornado overnight for the obvious reasons than you are during the day uh, because you're sleeping and there's no way to be alarmed. Anywhere from really the boot hill of Missouri all the way back down to Lufkin. And we're going to see actually several rounds coming through. So it's not like one line's going to come through and then you're done and done. So keep that in mind that you're going to have to be weather aware until the whole system passes. Damaging winds actually could be a big threat with this system. Watch it all develop. As I said this morning, really not a lot of issues. It's as we get into the afternoon hours that you start to see some of these cells fire up into Texas, look into Arkansas. We see them as well. And then everything moves east. And notice we have one batch of storms, but there's another that is developing too. 
So this isn't a one and done situation. This is a couple rounds coming through and even a third round might uh, line up. Then everything kind of lines up as we head into tomorrow morning. It will be an active Tuesday for us here as we do have that threat for storms from Alabama all the way back down into Louisiana. And we'll see some of those stretching into Georgia and to Tennessee as well. But the bulk of the worst stuff will be from Birmingham as you head down towards really uh, the Panhandle and back towards uh, Lake Pontchartrain and uh, towards Lafayette. Watch this system as we go through our Tuesday through the morning hours. You're going to see big lightning, maybe waking you up a little bit early. I know the kids, a lot of them not back in school just yet. Have a couple more days here to enjoy the vacation. But even this, look at this line right here. That'll knock your socks off. That's making its way in between Nashville and Knoxville. And this huge line here is going to be pretty treacherous and the same as the one behind it. But again, I, I think the key is, is that you're going to see multiple rounds Moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. Dew points will be plenty high here. So we are going to have that forcing. And notice it's lasting through the entire, entire day on Tuesday. And even on Wednesday, the threat of storms, they don't look as severe, but certainly the threat does exist. Those flood watches extend anywhere from western Kentucky all the way down into Beaumont, Texas. Very juicy atmosphere two to three inches of rain. We need the rain in a lot of places here, Jim. It's really dry, but we could do without the severe weather, of course. We absolutely could. Um, I, we may see more flood watches too come east. East, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't for disagree. Alabama yeah, I agree. And, I agree. And to Georgia. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, guys. Uh, such extremes and such swings. I think that's what's so hard to deal with is we were dealing with, you know, a week ago in the south, temperatures below zero, and now we're talking about our highs in the 70s. Today, we will see storms anywhere from the Boot Hill of Missouri all the way back down into Lufkin, Texas. We see the storms. We see the potential for tornadoes. Damaging winds will be a big issue here, and I think that's what I really want to emphasize with this. I don't want you to sleep on the fact that just damaging winds, oh, we're just going to have damaging winds. Those can be as strong as a weak tornado. So keep that in mind. Here's our torque on value of five uh, for the day. It takes as we head into the afternoon hours so things to fire up. And notice it's not just going to be one line of storms coming through. You're going to see multiple lines pass on through. So don't think you're finished right when you get uh, the weather to come on in. Everything will kind of congeal into a, a bigger line as we head into tomorrow morning. But again, when you see this, yes, you can have little tornadoes spin up, but it's also just huge wind, you know, issues with that drops down into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. As we head into our Tuesday, that's tomorrow. Our Torcon values here still three and five across the board and watch it as it progresses across the Mississippi River. You can even see that moisture streaming northbound coming up here from the south. It all is going to be pushing east and notice you're going to see storms. Oh, you're going to see more storms. Oh, and you're going to see even more storms. And I will say behind this, we do have cooler air coming in. And I'm air quoting that because essentially it's just going to take us back down to average. It's not like we're going to see, you know, frigid air. It's just going to be back down to where we should be. Wednesday, we'll still see some weather coming through. It doesn't look like it'll pop as much as it is as we head through our Monday and Tuesday. But look at all these cells. And by the way, blinding rain. Flooding could be an issue with this. It goes through Little Rock as we head into this afternoon. And again, there's your another line coming through as we head into this evening. Doesn't really clear out of us until we head into our Tuesday morning. So it's a long lasting system coast to coast yet again. It's three weeks in a row now we've had it. And there are your storms streaming northbound into Texarkana. This is Louisiana, Arkansas and Texas. Hence the name Texarkana, Jim, which I always think it's cute when they do this right on the border of Texas and Arkansas. That's a pretty one.